Hello everybody and welcome to uh, video 7 of unit 1. In this video we're going to discuss the metric system. We're going to look at metric units, their prefixes, and then do a few metric conversions. In chemistry, the system of measurement that we will be using will be the metric system. And these are the most common base units. We will be using grams for mass, liters for volume, meters for length, seconds for time, Kelvin for temperature, amperes for electric current, and mole for the amount of a substance. These base units are what we will add the prefixes to when we are making our units either larger or smaller. This table here should look somewhat familiar. It has been added to your conversion sheet that you have placed in your notebook. In this table, you will notice that you have the prefix, the symbol, the conversion factor, and then another way of helping you think about these units um, as you work with them. The prefix is what we will say when we say the unit. So giga, mega, kilo, hecto, deca, and then our base, grams, liters, meters, seconds, deci, centi, milli, micro, and nano. The symbols usually um, are listed here. There may be some variations depending on what site or um, reference you are using. So you may see a little bit of a change in whether they're uppercase or lowercase. But it's important for you to know what the uh, symbols look like. Conversion factors. In this column here, I have placed um, how to determine how many bases for the bigger units um, are in a single one of the larger units and then below in one base unit how many of the smaller units so for example if we were looking at meters we would have one gigameter would be one times ten to the ninth meters or one kilometer would be a thousand meters looking below in the smaller units, if we had one meter, we would have 100 centimeters. Or if we had one nanometer, I'm sorry, if we had one meter, we would have 1 times 10 to the negative ninth nanometers. So it's important that you understand these conversion factors because this is what you will be using to put in your dimensional analysis when solving for um, metric conversions. Let me take a minute to show you how you're going to use your conversions um, to set up your dimensional analysis when doing metric uh, conversions. So first thing you're going to need to do is look at your problem, which is converting 2 kilometers to centimeters. So we're going from 2 kilometers to centimeters. If you look at your chart, there is no direct conversion from kilometers to centimeters. But we can go from kilometers to meters and then we can go meters to centimeters. When we are doing metric conversions, it's important for you to remember that we are always going through the base unit. So always go through the base unit. That way you don't have to worry about knowing a number of different conversion factors. If you look at your chart, one kilometer equals 1,000 meters and one meter equals 100 centimeters. So those should be the conversions that we're going to use to convert two kilometers to centimeters. You're going to set this problem up just like any other dimensional analysis. Two kilometers, then you're going to make your t-chart. We're going to set in our units of kilometers, and we only can go to meters. We don't have a conversion straight to centimeters. But then we can go meters to centimeters. When our units cancel, we know we've set up our problem correctly. Now we can fill in our numbers. The number in front of meters is 1,000. The number in front of kilometers is 1. The number in front of centimeters is 100, so we put that there and the number in front of meters is 1. When you set this up, 
you are going to take all the numbers on the top and multiply them and divide them by the numbers on the bottom. Putting this into our calculator, we get 200,000 centimeters. Again, you want to keep sig figs consistent. Looking at our original number given of 2 kilometers, we only have one sig fig. Our answer must have one sig fig. Without putting in a decimal, we only have one sig fig, so our answer is correct and accurate in terms of sig figs and uh, mathematics. All right, let's do another one. We're going to convert 5 centimeters to hectometers. Again, we want to look at our chart and try to find our units. We're going to go through the base unit. So through base unit because we do not have a direct conversion from centimeters to hectometers. We know that 100 centimeters equals 1 meter and 1 hectometer equals 1,000 I'm sorry, equals 100 meters. So when 1 hectometer is 100 meters. Set up our conversion dimensional analysis table. We're going to sit here 5 centimeters, centimeters on the bottom, but we're going to go to meters this time. We want to leave meters and go to hectometers, which in your Conversion table is a capital H. I'm sorry about that. Our units cancel. Now we can fill in our numbers. One meter is 100 centimeters, 100. One hectometer is 100 meters. So what you're going to do is you're going to place these into your calculator. You're going to take your five multiply it by 1, divide it by 100, multiply by 1, divide by another 100, and you should get a number that equals 0 0.0005 hectometers. Again, check your first number. We have 5, which is 1 sig fig. And in our point zero 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 five hectometers, the 5 is our only sig fig, so we will have 1 sig fig. So this is the correct answer. Okay, I have a few more examples to do with you. 5.2 decimeters to, uh, to kilometers. So we're going to start with the number that we know, 5.2 decimeters. Set up our T-chart. We want decimeter on the bottom, and we're going to go to meters. Remember, that's our base unit. Then we're going to go to meters to kilometers. And one meter is 10 decimeters, and one kilometer is 1,000 meters. Take your calculator, put in 5.2, times it by 1, divide by 10, times it by 1, divide by 1,000, and you get 0 0.00052 kilometers and 5.2 decimeters. Check your sig figs. First one has two sig figs. Your original value, your ending value has two sig figs. So your answer is correct. Our next problem is 527 kilograms. To milligrams, we are going to start out with our 527 kilograms. Keep your units in your dimensional analysis. It's going to be very important. We're going to go from kilograms to meters, our base unit, remember, then meters to milligrams, and one kilogram is a thousand meters, and one meter is a thousand milligrams. If you put this into your calculator, you're going to put 527 times 1,000 times 1,000, and you're going to get 527 billion, which is six zeros, milligrams. When you start getting large numbers like this, the best thing to do is to put it in scientific notation. 
So if we move over, we're going to move over three, six, seven, eight places. So this would be 5.27 times 10 to the eighth milligrams. Look at your sig figs, three to begin with here, three down here, so this is our correct answer. Now I'd like you to take a moment and try some practice problems on your own. Make sure that you write down the original problem in your notes, set up a t-chart and do your dimensional analysis. Keep your units in your t-chart. It's going to be very important for crossing them out and setting up your problem correctly. And then go back and make sure that your final answer has the correct number of sig figs. This here is an L for liters. This here is microliters. Um, those L's look like ones for some reason. So go ahead and pause your video now. Re, uh, write down these problems, try them on your own, and we'll review them in class tomorrow. See you then.